About eight months ago, I painted an army in a weekend. This army. This army is done, but done's a funny word. Their eyes are picked out, their bases are all painted, and the rims are all a color, but really, this army isn't exactly where I would like it to be. One of the things I didn't manage to get done in that 48 hours was all of the weapons which on the Sylvaneth is kind of okay because they're trees. A little bit like the Tyranids, it's kind of okay if you don't pick out the weapons because it's just part of their body and so it's okay if they're not super special. But I want them to be super special. When I was painting this army, I had a vision in my head of power sword-esque glittery rainbow weapons and that is something that I really want to do. I wanna spend a little time, get this army singing and get it exactly where I would like it to be. I love the revenants of the Sylvaneth. Half trees, half ghosty folksies. But one thing I didn't know about when I was painting these up eight months ago was the power of contrast paint through the airbrush. I mixed up some yellow contrast paint with a lot of water and paint medium and gave a little dusting. This darkened them a little bit because previously I had them highlighted up to pure white, but the vibrancy of the new yellow makes them look brighter than the old version. I sprayed all my revenants with yellow to make them that much more punchy. I wonder if in another eight months I'll have a fun trick that I can throw on the tree half of these fellas. I put some magenta and light blue on my palette. And I do have black and white and neutral gray as well, but for the most part, I wanna stick with darker blue and dark magenta for my color value. I don't wanna desaturate these colors, especially when they're gonna be sitting right next to the ultra vibrant yellow bodies. I wanna keep things colorful. I took dark magenta and put this over the weapon, base coating it just to see what it would look like. This isn't a thing I just know will work. It's an idea in my head and I need to discover it. I put dark magenta and dark blue paint on the sword and picked out some different parts of the weapon to be different colors. This adds a lot of fun detail that isn't naturally on the sword and lets me play around with my values. I decided right at the top would be the bright spot and I decided to add a band of blue in the middle of the magenta. Maybe the sword is a magical color that appears either magenta or blue depending on the angle you're looking at it, but it's really neither of the colors. I mixed up brighter and brighter shades of magenta and blue, making a hot spot right in the middle of the arch, and then edge highlighting everything. Edge highlighting is my secret trick to power weapons. I'm not good at smooth blends, but the edge highlight hides a little bit of the messiness and also distracts from it. I took my best paintbrush and made a bunch of super fine scratches running randomly along the blade. These super fine lines also help to hide my messiness and add more interest again to this little weapon. I highlighted my little color band with white paint and the scythe was gleaming. This shape lends itself to long bands of color, but I had another idea for the sword. I think quadrants of color would look really cool too. On the sword, I imagined it in six parts, almost like a checkerboard pattern. I base coated these areas with my darker blue and magenta and then worked up to my pure blue and magenta. Because these bands of color are so much shorter than on the sickle, I didn't feel like I had to highlight them up quite as brightly, keeping it just slightly brighter shades than my original colors. One trick I have for brightening things up is to use white in place of the color, building up values and then glazing the real color over top. I find it easier to work in grayscale and then add color than working solely with color sometimes. Now to see if this worked or not, I edge highlighted the blade. I don't know if there's a good method to paint the middle of a sword. This edge is too narrow to run the edge of a paintbrush across and lay paint down that way, so I just hold my breath and paint as straight a line as I possibly can. Then for more scratches and accentuating the reflective bright spot with some white paint. They're cotton candy weapons, but man, do they look magical. I was definitely worried when I put the colors on my palette that they would look a little silly, and they do look a little silly, but I really like them. They give these guys a really magical feel. And comparing the cotton candy weapon to just the pinkish weapon, these models really pop, and it brings a lot of attention to those weapons, the business end of the model. Oh, these guys are sick. These weapons definitely take some time to paint, but they feel really good to paint. I think it's the variety. Since it's not a bunch of identical Space Marine swords, they each possess a new challenge that I get to figure out. And it makes this style more interesting because it's seen so differently from model to model. The axe looks different from the spear. The spear looks different from the sword. But with all of them the same color running across the set, it feels right. It also goes along with my lore. The Sylvaneth are very natural, literally made of nature, but no one exactly knows what's going on with these new, less tree-like beings, the Revenants. One day, Alariel, the Everqueen, did something that made the Revenants exist, and whatever that thing was, she removed the memory of it from all of her Sylvaneth subjects. 
So all they knew is that there were these new beings with new powers, and perhaps new weapons, and no one has any understanding of where they came from or what they are. To me, that story made me think of pink and blue gem swords. And you know what else always tells a story? That's right, our Patreon. We have monthly terrain packs, this month is the Plasma Pipes. A totally tubular set of power pipes, plants, generators, and roboskeleton workers. With magnet slots, this energetic set is ready to crisscross a battlefield. And if you always want to be up to date on the goings on at Eons of Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we are picking three followers to receive this month's terrain, follow the link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. Now that I'm here, I also think the banner could use some touch-ups. I like that it's simple, I doubt that the nature beings believe in dyed fabric, but the symbol could use some more pop. I highlighted with white and then made up a gold mix with some bright silver paint and orange ink. This is a super thin gold glaze that'll brighten the metal and look especially bright over the white paint. Now my revenants are ready for action. These pink and blue weapons make the army for me. I already liked them, but now pink and blue weapons are so striking. I want to paint more. I just need to make sure that it still looks good on the bigger guys. I remember building this model on Christmas Day, and boy, do I wish I left the hand off for painting. He is so big and so spiky, it's impossible to hold him steady, but each of his fingertips does make a nice little sword. Then I highlighted them up, getting my colors nice and saturated, and then picking them out with the edge highlight. This is a really fun look on the Tree Lord, as he's all natural. And I don't just mean naked, but his fingertips are gem swords. I feel like this also makes it more obvious that it's not just his hand, but a weapon that has an attack profile in the game. I used my dark blue to blend in between the brown bark of his hand and the wacky colors of his fingers, and he was ready to rejoin the army. I really like that the Tree Lord also has a splash of these gem weapons. I feel like he bridges the gap between the wacky revenant units and the more tree-like simple dryads. He's 50-50. They definitely take a fair bit more effort than my typical airbrushed power swords, but I think they look a little bit more striking. Also, it's just kind of two different approaches to two different armies. I crank out space marines, but this army mostly sits in a box. And every now and then I'll take it out, take a look at it, and just tinker with it. And one day after years of tinkering, I think it'll be absolutely magical. I have been dreaming of these swords in my head for months, and I am so happy with how they turned out. The Sylvaneth are about the furthest thing from my 40k armies, and not that I don't love painting my Necrons, Tyranids, and Black Templar, but they don't scratch the itch that the Sylvaneth do. It feels really different, painting with bright, saturated colors, not recreating real-world weapons and armor, but having the freedom to paint fantasy things. Luckily enough, the Sylvaneth have been getting a lot of love from Games Workshop lately in the form of new models, and I can't wait to paint those up. And who knows, I still don't have Alariel on her big beetle, and I think blue and pink would look really cool on her. 